Dearest, can you ever forgive me? The misery I have caused you since that day at Lucy's has kept me to my rooms in a fever of uncertainty and self-reproach. Oh, Maggie, if only you had not given me that long look of love after I kissed you. It has burnt itself into my soul so that no other image can come there, and I am still filled with a selfish passion. Because it is your wish, I shall endeavor not to see you again. Somehow I shall drag my body from place to place until you call me back to you. Oh, Maggie, do call me back. I have no motives. I am indifferent to everything but my love for you. Here she is. Well, he's searching for me. You gooses, today we're to buy our dresses for the dance. Oh, goodness, Lucy, forgive me. I quite forgot. Five minutes, I promise. I shan't take my eyes off the clock. <laughs> Papa? Yeah, uh, uh, I know that tone. You're about to try and coax some more sovereigns out of my pocket. Maggie says that poor Tom can think of nothing but getting back the milk bar. She fears it might make him unwell. But it was Uncle's last wish, you know, that he must get the mill back. <laughs> I've been talking to Philip Wakem, Papa, yeah. and he tells me his father is losing money on the mill. He thinks he might perhaps be in the mood for selling. Uh. Well, why don't you buy the mill, Papa? And where would I find the money for that? When I have a, an expensive dance to prepare for. Not your money, silly. Let guests buy it and allow Tom to manage it and pay off bit by bit. Why should Wakeham sell to guests, knowing that a Tolliver would be back in harness? I thought of that. Oh, you did? I think Philip could help if I talked to him again. And why should Master Philip care what happens to the Tollivers? I have reason to be sure that he does. Uh, At least about one of the Tollivers. What mischief are you up to, Lucy? Trust me. Well, if young Philip will keep his counsel, I dare say no harm will come of it. And I might have a word with Wakeham Senior. <laughs> Miss Maggie. Hello, Bob. How are you? Oh, you look rarely, miss. Last time I see you, you were mourning. It's oh, good to have you all prettied up again. I've brought some things for Tom. Is he at home? No, I miss sir. He's at the cottage. I I'll walk you down the lane. Thank you. Prissy will be getting his dinner, I expect. You're not met my Prissy, have you, miss? No, I'm looking forward to that. Oh, she's a little duck, Miss Maggie. She knows a thing or two besides how to make tipsy cakes and apricot roll-ups. I'm sure she's looking after Tom very well. Oh, I miss sir. And it's a pleasure to have Mr. Tom as a lodger. No, I, I meant these, miss. But I got one of them six months ago, so Prissy could let it out as a pleasure ball. Keep herself from mischief, see? Well, that's me. She ain't done so well. I've had to get her another. What do you think on that? See who I brought, Prissy? Ma'am. You be Miss Maggie. Miss Maggie it is. Oh, Miss, come in, for goodness do. I've looked forward like anything to meeting you, Miss. Bob's tongue's been running on about you ever since he first got my courting on. Oh. On and on as if he was light-headed. Oh, be quiet, woman. Oh, well, I shall come another day, especially to see you both, but this evening I must speak to my brother. Oh, I hope you don't mind, but I've brought him some things from our mother. Mind? Bless you, no, Miss. Mr Tom! We'll be right in here if you need anything, Miss. Good you, Maggie. Good to see you again. Oh, all these weeks and not a visit from you. Oh, I thought you were still vexed with me. I stayed away in case I made you angry. Oh, Maggie, that all happened many months ago. It upset me very much to have to say the things I did to you. I try and be as good a brother as I can, you know. Oh, I know, Tom, dear. I know you mean to be good. I've missed you very much. I've missed you too. Anyway, you've always vexed me, you spitfire. Hey, do you remember when you let all my rabbits die? Oh, will you ever let me forget? <laughs> all right. We were happy then, weren't we, Maggie? In those days. We were very happy. 
day. Do you remember how you always had to hold my hand if Mother was watching, even a hundred yards from the river? Well, she never seemed to understand that you were much more likely to fall in than oh. I. <laughs> and a sticky little hand it usually was and all. <sighs> Tom, have you received an invitation from Lucy for Thursday next? Oh, aye, it came last week. Well, you are coming to the dance, aren't you? I'm afraid not, no. Uncle Dean's sending me to Newcastle for a week's business. Oh, Tom, Lucy will be so upset. Oh, is that the reason for this special visit then? An emissary from our fair cousin? <laughs> not exactly. Although it is about the dance that I came. You see, Lucy has also invited Philip Wakeham. Tom, for almost a year now I've kept my promise to you. I haven't even seen Philip, let alone spoken to him. Now it seems inevitable that we shall meet at Lucy's dance. There should be no necessity for you to speak to him even then. I wish to speak to him. I see. We should be surrounded by other people, Tom. What possible objection can you have? You know my feelings on the matter. I would like to be friends with him again. My father was alive. I tried to prevent you from disgracing him as well as yourself. Now that he's dead and you clearly wish to be independent, well, I suppose I have to leave you to make your own decisions. My opinion of Philip Wakeham hasn't changed. If you take up with him again, then you must give me up. But that's so cruel and stupid, Tom. I should only see Philip at Uncle Dean's or in company. We'll never meet in secret again. I have no confidence in you. How can you say that when I've kept my word to you all these months? Look, haven't you got sense enough to see that a brother who's been out and about in the world knows better what's right and respectable for his sister than she knows herself? I have sense enough to know I'm entitled to command my own life. What right have you to dictate to me whom I should or should not see? Oh dear God, woman, I've the right because I love you. You... You're my only sister. Look, I, I know you think I'm not kind to you, but I only do what I believe to be best. Tom, dear, I know that. But our natures are totally different. Well, you just don't seem to understand that things affect me differently. Oh, yes, I do. I understand only too well. But what you don't seem to understand is my objection to your association with a man whose father must hate the thought of us both. Our father's last act on this earth, it was to beat Wakeham within an inch of his life. Look, if I intended to marry Philip, I might understand your attitude better. But I don't think of him as a lover, Tom, only as a friend. The very thought of you associating with Philip Wakeham is disgusting to me in every way. Then there's nothing more to be said. Sit down, I'd rather walk about. She's much handsomer than this, I think. Not a good likeness. She has much finer eyes. Yes. And a deuced fine figure, too. You've seen her? Of course I've seen her. Seen her at the mill and at church. But then, appearances can lie, can't they? She's probably as dangerous and unmanageable as her father. You're quite wrong. She's very tender and affectionate. None of the airs and petty contrivances other women have. Your mother was prettier. I don't remember. No. It's a thousand pities I had no likeness of her. Were you and mother never unhappy? Not for one single hour. Then why can't you be glad for me to have that same sort of happiness? You're the only fellow I know who can get the better of me with talk. Oh. I'm sorry I lost my temper the last time we spoke about this. Father, what can I do? I can have no peace of mind without Maggie, and her brother will never consent to our meeting again while you hold the mill, and Maggie will never go against her brother. I see, so the fault is all mine. That isn't what I said. Do you wish me to visit Miss Tulliver, Philip? For what reason? Do you? Yes. No. 
I don't know. I'm so afraid our long separation will have changed her feelings for me. She doesn't strike me as a jilt. No, no, of course not. But I think she really believes now events will always divide us. Events over which we have no control. Mr. Dean came to my office yesterday. Seems he'd heard about me losing money on the mill and the farm and thought I might consider selling. Am I right in thinking Mr. Dean is uncle to your dark-eyed damsel? Yes. Well, I might consider transferring the mill to Gaston Company. It's of more trouble than it's worth to me. You will sell it to Gaston Company, Father? May come to nothing, Phil, but we can try. It's an intermediate step, isn't it? But there's one thing. If you care to swallow Tom Tolliver for his sister's sake, that's your business. I'm afraid I've no source to make him go down so easily. I shall have no transactions with him at all over the sale. I don't wish to see him or even to speak to him. Will you speak to Mr. Dean, Father, tomorrow? First thing. First thing. Thank you, Father. <laughs> I hope she sweetened your life, Phil, as your mother sweetened mine. You'll sell. We've already drawn up papers. By the end of the week, Doyle Cup Mill shall be ours. Oh, I can scarcely believe it. We can go home. Oh, it, it, it always seems such an impossibility. Wakem's manager has already left. I've made arrangements for your mother to return tomorrow. Yeah. She'll be a sad loss to Lucy. In the matter of uh, household comfort. Uh, but I dare say we shall manage. Oh, Uncle, I, I just don't know how I can thank you. By continuing to work for us as well as you have been. You've done me credit, Tom. If I'd had a son of my own, I shouldn't have been sorry to see him turn out like you. Well, I've done my best, sir. You've given us great satisfaction at guests, my boy. I, uh, I wasn't going to tell you this for a week or two, but uh, uh, this seems as good a time as any. <clears throat> Both Mr. Guest and myself uh, feel it's time you were rewarded. We've decided to give you a share in this business, and we'll be glad to increase that share as the years go by. This is a great stride for you, but I'm bound to say you deserve it. I'm most grateful, sir. <laughs> We can go into the particulars when you, you get back from your Newcastle trip. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's a nasty place. It's, it's very smoky. Oh, I don't mind, sir. I like the work. The more I have to do, the better I feel. You, oh, come now. Even to my business-loving ears, that sounds a sad confession for such a young man. Why, you, you'll be taking a wife one day soon. Oh, I think not, sir. Well, well, time will tell, eh? Oh, does Maggie know yet about the mill? Uh, well, I haven't told her, but... Um, I have a suspicion from something Lucy said that uh, young Philip Wakeham's regard for Maggie might have something to do with his father's changing his mind about selling. Uh, well, if that twisted runt expects me to be grateful, he's going to be disappointed. Yeah, now, now, Tom, you're as bad as your father. Make allowances, boy. Swallow that pride. You want the mill back, don't you? I thought I'd be so pleased to be back. But it doesn't feel like home at all. It seems so strange and neglected, doesn't it? It's father's house and we're back in it. That's all that matters. Tom, now that we're back together again, can we not forget our differences, if only for mother's sake? Do you still intend to go to Lucy's dance? Yes. Then we have nothing further to say to each other. Have 
you news. News? Oh, Philip, don't be so obtuse. You know very well what I mean. I puzzled my poor little brain to death to bring you two together, and now you pretend you don't know what it's all about. You're a wicked little matchmaker. Don't laugh at me. You're going to adore Maggie like a husband in a fairy tale. And we're going to be the most charming quartet in St. Ogg's. You with Maggie and I with Stephen. Well, that's if I can ever get Maggie and Stephen to talk to each other again. She is so beautiful. She's the most beautiful girl in the whole county. You've simply got to marry Maggie. I've quite made up my mind. Oh, I've not spoken a word to her all evening. But you've been here a whole hour. Yeah, so has that terrible fellow Torrey. He's not given her a moment's peace all evening. He does seem to be fatiguing his face muscles more than usual. Mm, I think it's the new eyeglass. No, I think it's Maggie. But I shall soon put a stop to that. You must go to the conservatory and wait. Am I indiscreet? Don't joke, just do as I say. I'm being at my most severe. And if there's anyone in the conservatory, you must make them leave. Ah. Oh, Philip, don't be tiresome. Be subtle. Tell them the building's on fire. Dear Lucy, you're never governing well. That's a verity. I could never believe it. Go to the conservatory. But why was she crying? For no reason at all that I could discover. I declare, will you have a sister as strange as any girl I know? I can hardly credit so much time has passed as I last saw. Have I changed so little? You're far more beautiful. My dear, dear friend. Oh, <laughs> I've missed you so much. And this meeting now, does it mean your brother's changed his mind about me? No. Tom still feels the same. But I no longer care. I should have resisted him a long time ago. Then there's nothing to hinder our being friends again, meeting and talking. No. Until I go away. I shall be leaving the district, Philip, very soon. I have a new situation to go to. Is there no alternative? Now that your family is back at the mill... I don't wish to live with Tom. That would be intolerable now. I wish to be independent. Oh, Maggie, why do you always seem to run away from the people who love you most? Love seems to bring nothing but pain, Philip. All I want to do now is build a world for myself outside it, as men do. What is the matter, Maggie? Won't you tell me? Has something happened I don't know about? Hmm? Lucy assumed your unhappiness was due to our separation, but now we're together again and he's still unhappy. Is this something even she doesn't know about? I... Oh, Philip. Is there someone new? Someone you're very fond of? Trust me, Maggie, I shall understand. <sighs> There's nothing but just my silly imagination. Come, let us find somewhere to sit down and you shall tell me all the things you've done since we last spoke. Would you like some punch? Yes, please. It's very good. You look very pale, Miss Tunnel. Do I? Are you tired? Not in the least. Uh, would you like me to fetch you some punch? Thank you, but Philip has already gone. So... Maggie. I'd rather not dance, just now. Look at me. You must see what you're doing to me. Stephen, please, do you want Lucy to see us like this? Oh, Philip. Please go away, I beg you. You must realise how impossible it is for me to go on like this. I can't even visit Lucy anymore for fear of meeting... I've, I've been riding 30 miles every day to try and stop my... Do you wish me to speak to Lucy? No, Stephen, no, you couldn't be so cruel. Then talk to me. All these weeks without a word, barely a look even, we must talk. Here now, how can Of course not here. Anywhere, the library, the garden, anywhere. Stephen, please go. Philip is coming back. In the library. I shall wait no. for you. <laughs> Hello, old fellow. Are you well, Stephen? I've seen nothing of you this season. Now, hardly my fault. I must have scampered up those damn stairs to your painting room at least a dozen times since Christmas. You're never in. Really? I'm sorry. Perhaps you should come down to earth. Meaning what exactly? Only that I wish you conduct yourself less like a sparrow on the roof and not go in and out so much without letting your servants know. Those stares are enough to embitter any friendship. Why are you staring at those 
Splendid raspberry, stay much in. You've an interesting face, Stephen. I've been studying your expression quite closely this evening. Oh, really? I'm very flattered. I'm surprised. I could have sworn you've been studying Miss Tulliver. Natural mistake. You've been standing very close to her for a good deal of the evening, haven't you? Really, because Lucy asked me to be civil to her. However, Miss Tulliver has a habit of snubbing. You're a damn liar and hypocrite! I'm sorry it took so long. I saw you talking to Stephen Guest. Yes, I was thanking him for being so amiable towards you during my absence. He's usually so aloof, but I could see he was quite animated with you. Shall we sit? I still go quite often to the Red Deeps, you know. Do you remember the old summer house? I remember all the places we went. Will you visit them again one day with me? No, I think not. Our futures will never be joined to the past, will they? That book's quite closed. That book will never be closed. Very well, now we shall talk. I came in here to hide, Stephen. I don't wish to discuss anything with you. Please let me go. I want no chatter from you about ungentlemanly conduct or insulting behaviour, Maggie. I'm past caring about your woman's dignity. Now, you're not leaving this conservatory until I finish what I have to say. Then say it. I am in love with you. Hopelessly, helplessly, irrevocably in love. I've done my best to resist it, for your sake and for Lucy's, but, but I can't go on without some word or gesture from you. Oh, have you no pity or consideration? I am in love with you with my whole heart and soul, and if I were free, I'd ask, I'd beg you to take my hand, my life, my whole future, and do what you liked with them. But you're not free, and I would die rather than hurt Lucy. There's only one pain I'd feel more keenly than harming Lucy, the pain of knowing that you felt nothing at all for me but contempt. Then, dearest, look at me. Even if Lucy did not exist, I have other ties. You're not engaged to Philip Wakem. I don't mean to marry anyone else. Maggie, I want to hear you say that you love Philip more than you love me. Say it! Look, love is natural, Stephen, but surely pity and faithfulness are natural too. If I were to give in now and go with you, the thought of what we were doing to Philip and Lucy would live with me for the rest of my life. I'd be haunted by the suffering we caused them. And because of that, our own love would be poisoned. Then you do love me? I think I've loved you from the moment I first saw you. I'd like you have done everything in my power to resist you. I can bear anything now, dearest. dangerous. Anyone might find us here. Lucy tells me you're to leave St. Ogg's. Is it because of me? Yes. I leave on Saturday. I'm to be governess to three children in York. And then tomorrow will be our last day together. Oh, no, tonight. We must stop it again. Come with me on the river tomorrow afternoon, Maggie. Just the two of us. I know you like boating more than anything. One last meeting before we part. Lucy will be in Lindham all day tomorrow. She need never know. Please, dearest. The tide will be right at half past four. If you would rather, we could row as far as Regreth and walk back. Not more than 30 minutes. Is that so much to ask for? I would so like one happy, peaceful meeting alone together. Tomorrow, then? Yes. Why 
Why didn't you wake me? Have we reached the crest? Stephen? Where are we? We're long past La Cresse. Yes. But it'll take us hours to get back. We're not going back. You planned this? It's the only solution. What is? Elopement. Stephen, if you will not row back, I shall. Give me the oars. Maggie! <coughs> we'll be quite safe. The current will carry us to Torby. We'll be quite safe. God help you, Stephen. What have you done? <laughs> <laughs> 